In the course of time, Amnon, son of David, fell in love with Tamar, the beautiful sister of Absalom, son of David. Amnon became so obsessed with his sister Tamar that he made himself ill. She was a virgin, and it seemed impossible for him to do anything to her. Now Amnon had an advisor named Jonadab, son of Shemia, David's brother. Jonadab was a very shrewd man. He asked Amnon, why do you, the king's son, look so haggard morning after morning? Won't you tell me? Amnon said to him, I'm in love with Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Go to bed and pretend to be ill, Jonadab said. When your father comes to see you, say to him, I would like my sister Tamar to come and give me something to eat. Let her prepare the food in my sight so I may watch her and then eat it from her hand. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be ill. When the king came to see him, Amnon said to him, I would like my sister Tamar to come and make some special bread in my sight, so I may eat from her hand. David sent word to Tamar at the palace. Go to the house of your brother Amnon and prepare some food for him. So Tamar went to the house of her brother Amnon, who was lying down. She took some dough, kneaded it, and made the bread in his sight and baked it. Then she took the pan and served him the bread, and he refused to eat. Send everyone out of here, Amnon said. So everyone left him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food here to my bedroom that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the bread she had prepared and brought it to her brother Amnon in his bedroom. But when she took it to him to eat, he grabbed her and said, Come to bed with me, my sister. No, my brother, she said to him, don't force me. Such a thing should not be done in Israel. Don't do this wicked thing. What about me? Where could I get rid of my disgrace? And what about you? You would be like one of the wicked fools in Israel. Please speak to the king. He will not keep me from being married to you. He refused to listen to her, and since he was stronger than her, he raped her. Then Amnon hated her with an intense hatred. In fact, he hated her more than he had loved her. No, she said to him, sending me away would be a greater wrong than what you've already done to me. But he refused to listen to her. He called his personal servant and said, get this woman out of my sight and bolt the door after her. So the servant put her out and bolted the door after her. She was wearing an ornate robe, for this was the kind of garment that virgin daughters of the king wear. Tamar put ashes on her head and tore the ornate robe she was wearing. She put her hands on her head and went away, weeping aloud as she went. Her brother Absalom said to her, Has that Amnon, your brother, been with you? 
Be quiet for now, my sister. He is your brother. Don't take this thing to heart. And Tamar lived in her brother Absalom's house, a desolate woman. When King David heard all of this, he was furious. And Absalom never said a word to Amnon, either good or bad. He hated Amnon because he had disgraced his sister, Tamar. Two years later, when Absalom's sheep shearers were at Baal Hazor near the border of Ephraim, he invited all the king's sons to come there. Absalom went to the king and said, your servant has had shearers come. Will the king and his attendants please join me? No, my son, the king replied. All of us should not go. We would only be a burden to you. Although Absalom urged him, he still refused to go, but gave him his blessing. Then Absalom said, If not, then please let my brother Amnon come with us. The king asked him, why should he go with you? But Absalom urged him. So he sent with him Amnon and the rest of the king's sons. Absalom ordered his men, listen, when Amnon is at high spirits from drinking wine, and I say to you, strike Amnon down, then kill him. Don't be afraid. Haven't I given you this order? Be strong and brave. So Absalom's men did to Amnon what Absalom had ordered. Then all the king's sons got up, mounted their mules, and fled. While they were on their way, the report came to David. Absalom has struck down all the king's sons. Not one of them is left. The king stood up, tore his clothes, and laid down the ground. And all his attendants stood by with their clothes torn. But Jonadab, son of Shemiah, David's brother, said, My lord should not think that they killed all the princes. Only Amnon is dead. This has been Absalom's express intention ever since the day Amnon raped his sister Tamar. My lord, the king should not be concerned about the report that all the king's sons are dead. Only Amnon is dead. Meanwhile, Absalom had fled. Now the man standing watch looked up and saw many people on the road west of him, coming down on the side of the hill. The watchman went and told the king, I see men in the direction of Horonam on the side of the hill. Jonadab said to the king, See, the king's sons have come. It has happened just as your servant said. As he finished speaking, the king's sons came in, wailing loudly. The king, too, and all his attendants wept very bitterly. Absalom fled and went to Talme, son of Amihud, king of Geshur. But King David mourned many days for his son. After Absalom fled and went to Geshur, he stayed there three years. King David longed to go to Absalom, for he was consoled concerning Amnon's death.